What's up guys, CB Modi here back with another video and today we'll take a look at full versus empty hard drives and also too I guess along the way SSDs as well. Now a lot of people, myself included, when they do make videos talking about SSDs and hard drives, a lot of the time we do mention not to fill them up, mainly because they slow down. But it's never really been tested too much and I'm sure there's other tests out there but I've never personally tested it. So today we're going to run some tests and see just how much performance you're losing if you fill up your hard drive. Now you may also to notice myself and also to again a lot of other people when we do review storage devices whether they'll be hard drives, uh, SSDs, external thumb drives, all that kind of stuff, all review them as they're empty as that's going to give you the best performance. So today we're going to fill up a drive and see what happens to those numbers. Now for testing today we grabbed ourselves three WD Elements external drives. These are four terabyte drives, all running WD Blue drives inside of them, all connected up to the same USB 3 port. Although, with that being said, when I say the same, they're unplugged and replugged, so that's the same port on the same controller, but they're plugged into different drives for the different tests. Now these drives were all produced at around the same time and they also two were bought at the same time so in terms of similarities they're basically all the same at this point. The difference between them is one of them is going to be filled up to 99% capacity, the other will be filled up to 95% capacity and the other will be at zero. The reason why I threw in the 95% capacity is for those people who are almost at 100% but they've still got that little bit of room left to see what exactly kind of performance they'll be getting if you're almost full but not exactly fully full. Now I almost Almost tried to get 100% full on that 99% drive, but unfortunately I couldn't exactly find a file that was big enough to fill it to 100%, but small enough to stay under that 100% marker. So 99% was close enough for today's testing. I also too at least tried to run a defrag on the drives before I went ahead and run these tests. However, the 99% one I don't think did a very good job at defragmenting itself because not really that much happened when it went ahead and defragged. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers and see exactly what kind of a performance difference we get when we have 0% versus 99%. And taking a look at the numbers, they're actually really surprising. We get 182 megabytes per second on the reads and 180 on the sequential writes in terms of our 0% drive. But once we fill up, we see that we lose 83 megabytes per second on the reads and 79 megabytes per second on the writes, which is a significant loss in speed and definitely would be felt in load times and also too if you didn't have the fastest drive to begin with. If you had a SATA 2 or even just a slow drive in general, losing 80 or so megabytes per second would be very, very substantial. And just for reference, the SD cards that I use with my Panasonic GH5 camera transfer at 79 megabytes per second. So the speed, the entire speed that that card can run out is basically lost in a full drive. However, with that being said, that full drive wouldn't necessarily be felt within Windows as Windows uses reference notes to actually sort of remember where things are on the hard drive. However, where this performance loss will be felt is in file transfers, game load times, and overall system load times. Windows won't be too affected, but but everything else running on your system will definitely start to slow down a little bit. And even just the difference between the 95% and also to the 99% was also to a fairly big gap. Whilst it wasn't as big as 0% to 99%, at the end of the day, that 5% difference is actually a fairly big number. Now the testing that I did here today was sort of the best case scenario. That's because I used large video files, 4K files from the Panasonic GH5, and also to my Red Scarlet W uh, were used in these tests. So the video files files were rather large actually, whereas if you were to use a bunch of really small files, less than one gigabyte for example, you may be actually seeing worse performance as there will be a lot more smaller files there jumbling everything up and causing you slower speeds. So today was kind of like the best case scenario if you were to fill up a drive, just large huge video files were filling up our drive, but definitely could be seeing a lot worse performance if you were to go ahead and fill it with again one or two gig files that were all over the place. Now this leads us to I guess the next question. Why on earth is this even happening? Why is our drive slowing down when we do fill it with stuff? And honestly, there is a lot of different factors that are causing this problem, but something that the internet can mostly agree on, and that comes down to fragmentation. When you do put something on a hard drive, if you're loading it up in one go, it's going to load up in one chunk, for example. But if you're loading up multiple different things at the same time, they're going to be splitting them up into different chunks, and things are going to be all over the drive. You can run something like a disk defrag to help sort of push it into one easily accessible area and have large chunks again sort of of easy addressable free space but at the end of the day a lot of the time these slowdowns do come in the form of fragmentation. Now hard drives also to use mechanical arms or read heads to go ahead and read where the data is so if the data 
is all over the place on the drive, you're actually going to have to be moving that head physically back and forth to actually get to those free sectors to go ahead and store the data, read the data, and also to, in our case, run the speed tests. So the movement of the arm and also to the read head is just going to slow everything down, thus again giving you slower speeds. Whereas an empty drive can just be all done in one go without needing to really move the read head all over the place. Now do note, when I say a slowdown of hard drives, I don't necessarily mean the RPMs going slower or the read heads going slower, it's just that there's more time taken to actually read the data and write the data because there's less free portions left on the drive versus a completely empty one. Now disk defrags are also to one of those things that kind of work and kind of don't work. Usually when you just have a 50% or less drive, you're going to be fine with a disk defrag. However, if you've only got 10 to 15% storage left on your drive, you may actually notice the actual effectiveness of a disk defrag really doesn't help that much. That's mainly because the drive is full and there's no really sort of space around to move anything inside of that drive. If you've got 1% space full, you're not really going to be able to move too much stuff around because there's just no space to actually move it to. Now, with that being said, SSDs are also too in the same boat, but in a little bit of a different way. Now, SSDs also do slow down, but not due to fragmentation, mainly because of the way that NAND memory works. When you write to an SSD, it looks for empty blocks and dumps your data in there, or blocks and dumps your data in there. However, when your drive is at that sort of 95, 99% fill rate, it doesn't have many empty blocks left. And also too much like defragmentation, the trim command, which is what SSDs use, don't exactly work as effectively as when the drives are more empty. So what happens is you've got cells that have a little bit of data in there and what the drive has to do is write over the top of it. Whilst it doesn't sound like a too big a problem, it does slow it down just a little bit, thus resulting in a little bit of a slowdown. Now yes, definitely SSDs get a lot more technical than that explanation, but at the end of the day, when your drive is full, there's a lot less empty blocks, so it's going to take more time to overwrite the existing data. And again, I do know it can get a lot more technical and a lot more sort of uh, in-depth than what we did go in today. But again, just like your hard drives, they will slow down at that sort of 90 or even 80% fill rate, which is going to be a not great experience. But the question is, is this actually noticeable? Well, actually, not really. In day-to-day -day Windows tasks, I didn't actually notice anything that different. And personally, my SSD on my desktop is currently at a 90% fill rate. And honestly, I didn't notice really that much of a difference. It's not like going from super fast SSD to super slow SSD. Whilst you will be losing a few megabytes per second, it's really not something super noticeable. However, with that being said, it is still something that's there. And you may want to try and keep your drive fairly empty to again get the best performance. But TLDR time of this video. Will you lose performance with the full drive? Yes. How much are you losing? Around 80 megabytes per second on both the sequential reads and writes on a particular hard drive. Do keep in mind that SSDs and hard drives both lose performance when you do go ahead and fill them up and you want to keep at least 80 to 90% empty to go ahead and get the best performance out of your drive. Executing the trim command or the defrag on a hard drive is going to be your best option to keep them running as smoothly as possible. However, at at the end of the day, the more you put on a drive, the slower it's going to be. In the real world, whilst it isn't a fully noticeable thing, if you are doing a lot of file transfers or if you are doing something that relies on loading up large files, you will start to notice a slight little bit of a difference as that performance does start to drop off. Drive damage can be a thing, however, it isn't something that I was able to test as that is more of a long-term problem rather than something short-term that I could test like what we did here in this video. But overall, yes, you will lose performance if you fill up your drives. Otherwise, guys, let me know down in the comment sections if you were expecting actually 80 megabytes per second loss on both the reads and writes as an average, because I certainly wasn't. I thought there would be a few megs loss here and there, but honestly, I was very surprised when I saw 80 megabytes per second. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.